welcome to all of you. And uh, now I'll say, I didn't say it, I won't do it, I'm saving it for you. Happy birthday. Uh, it's a, a pleasure to say a happy birthday to someone from my generation. <laughs> but uh, courage has been second nature to Edward Teller. From the time he left a pro-fascist anti-Jewish government in Hungary and later left Germany for the United States uh, in 1935. And since 1941, we've been able to count him as a United States citizen. Courage, brilliance led him to seek a solution to the major problems of war and peace as he worked in the field of nuclear energy. His courage and tenacity in the face of the hostility within the scientific community made him the father of the hydrogen bomb. But for him, the Soviets would likely have been first to have a nuclear monopoly, and we'll never know if they would have been as restrained in its use as Dr. Teller's Atomptic Company has been. Dr. Teller has been outspoken in urging safety precautions for nuclear reactors. The Soviets have been working hard toward a monopoly of strategic defense, even though uh, they worked it, but uh, had they worked it, would have been the first of the hydrogen bomb. But once more, Dr. Teller had the courage, uh, support of a defense policy, while at the same time, he is the leading advocate of open cooperation in science. And so, you can see there's some in my favorite punch. <laughs> I, I highly recommend it if you haven't had it before, but you're here for a birthday party. Dr. Edward Teller, congratulations. Forty-first anniversary of your thirty-ninth birthday. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting younger very rapidly, sir, and that is all due to your influence. <laughs> <laughs> well, God bless you. If I may respond very briefly, I did want to say that it was not quite easy to start to work on the atomic bomb. I did it with some doubt. And the man who convinced me that I should do it was President Roosevelt talking to me and 2,000 others. But I had the feeling he was talking to me and saying, at the time of Hitler's invasion of Holland and Belgium, that it is our responsibility to work for defense. I knew at that time that the president already had the atomic possibilities in mind. There was no way for me to misunderstand the message and I never regretted it. I cared uh, very much more, at least personally much more, remarkable experience to have President Reagan's personal encouragement, the same as with Roosevelt but minus 2,000 other people in the present. And so, it cannot be any surprise that I continue to be dedicated to the human, humane approach to peace through defense. And I hope through the joint pursuit of defense and disarmament, because I believe that disarmament alone, without defense, may not be quite so good. But the two together, as proposed 
by our president is the one hope with which I remain comfortable even at the age of 41 years plus. Thank you. some daring on my part. <laughs> we had to close the government down because we couldn't get people across town and I'm going to take off the damn day. <laughs> Secretly, I'm hoping I'll be snowed in. <laughs> All right. You bet. Thank you. Chicago. Richards, Hello, those are Todd Durkin, Nice to see you. Well, why don't we... Well, Nick, I've been waiting this, but uh, I'm going to be very pleased to get your report, but perhaps uh, I might have a little summary in advance. Good. First of all, we all want to take uh, this opportunity to thank you for your confidence in, in uh, asking me to do this report. By way of a backdrop, Mr. President, uh, the first thing that we'd like to mention to you is the changes in technology in the, in the 80s. Uh, uh, the concept that there's marketplaces uh, really doesn't exist there anymore. The marketplaces are put together by electronics computers, telephone, because they work together by all the modern technologies to know about. Uh, in, in the course of our study, we found out that there are 300,000 of these screens that you see in brokers' offices and, and uh, things went on during the 80s and it is a backdrop to uh, uh, what happened. The other things we'd like to mention to you is certainly the market was too high uh, uh, by almost any standard. that. Uh, people use to uh, measure markets. And it was too high because there was some speculation. And also, there were some mechanical trading strategies, which people running funds of money use, which were, were pretty much price insensitive. Uh, they, didn't, they didn't look to values. They looked to timing, when to buy, and that sort of thing, so that they weren't uh, cut. The market came down a third, which it did, but the speed with which it came down. Uh, over five days, and in one day, uh, the 19th of October, some 22 percent, something like that. Uh, and this is dangerous for two two reasons. One, it places enormous strains on the financial system in the.
guys didn't like it. Yeah. 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 Yeah.